Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at the AST Hydrogen Transport, which is this lovely ship right here. This ship is intended for RP purposes rather than functionality, because there's not many situations where you would need this much hydrogen transported from one place to another. Although I suppose you could have two large bases, one on Mars and one like in space, and you could transport it between them, but still, it's a great design of a ship. Also, if the camera seems very funny in this video, I am attempting to use a controller to see if I can make the actual camera movements a, a little bit smoother. So starting at the very front, we have got some spotlights and blast door edges, so if we're going to ram something, we should be okay for a little bit of damage. We've got a hydrogen tank there, which is the first of many on this ship. Ion thrusters, because this can only go in space, although it can technically go on planets, it's just not that reliable because all the main thrust from the hydrogen thrusters are all at the back of the ship. We have got a connector on a piston for you to connect up to your base and transfer all the hydrogen across. We've got tons of hydrogen tanks here because that's the whole meaning of this ship. If I come a little bit down and come back a little bit, we do have a small catwalk in order to get to the connector underneath so you can just like tell the captain that you're getting closer and you're ready to connect and all that so he doesn't have to use the free camera. We've got some hydrogen thrusters there because there are a few on here but they're not necessary. We can see the little cabins there for your crew to go in. We've got a lovely catwalk going all the way along. More ion thrusters, we've got the captain's quarters, which we can just see there, we've got the little recreational quarters, lots of conveyors. Round the back here is where the main hydrogen thrusters are being kept. So this is what I meant by it can technically go on a planet, but you would need to rely on these thrusters in order to get in and out, which can be a bit problematic. There are parachutes on this if you did want to give it a go, but good luck with that. So going along the top here, we can see a O2 generator, which is a nice way of avoiding using any of the precious ice that could be put into the hydrogen tanks. We have got a small little view area here with glass, where you can just see into the area, so a little skylight. We got the antenna. Coming along the top here, you can see the conveyors and how they're all connected up to the tanks. We've got some blast door edges here, a gravity generator in the very middle. Not very protected, but it does look pretty. Keeping going along there, we've got some steps for you to access the very top of the ship if you weren't using your jetpack. And all the way along to the front, we have got a small interior turret and the parachute if you wanted to go back on the planet. So taking a look underneath, we can see a large cargo container peeking out there for us to access. So this would be one way of, say, just pulling out resources without having to go into the ship itself. We can see the connector and the small catwalk for you to go across. There's the hydrogen thrusters. And as we continue along here, we've got some nice little block works there, nice bit of pattern. And we'll eventually reach the very back of the ship. There we go. There's another turret on the underneath of the ship to keep it protected. It's very lightly protected, so you won't be able to fend off a load of pirates. It's just there to swipe maybe the pesky meteors that come close. And we have another connector there on the piston for you to connect up to a base. So now I'm going to take control of my character and let's take a look on the inside. So I'm just going to walk along here, jump across here and come down these steps. So this is steps where you would go up and say access the turret over there so we could walk across, refuel it and all that, access the settings from the outside, maybe do a bit of maintenance work. But if we want to go inside we could go down this over here. So let's walk along this. Here we go, we can walk along this side, say hello to the station and the Valiant Deluxe sitting there. Come along to here, and then we can drop down. Whee! We've got a ladder there to go back up, but then we can just keep going down here and access in here. Closing up the doors. It's so weird with a controller, just putting it out there. We have a few little ways to go. This side is exactly the same, it'll just take us to the opposite side, and around this side it's where we're going to take a look at first. So up these very steep steps here, we come through to a little room which contains some of the DLC blocks. This ship does feature a lot of DLC blocks in it, so if you do not have the DLC block pack, it's going to look very empty. 
So yes, this is the room here, and we can go through here. Let's go through here. So in this area is one of my favourites, favourite rooms on the ship. Because if I bring up the HUD and look at it, self-destruct sequence. Oh, I love ships which have self-destruct sequences on. Yes, we got the little chair there to sit on. We can come through this corridor. Originally, I thought this was a way up. But no, this is just a fancy block there. We got a clock to tell you the time. And we've got two more ways to go. So down here is where the medical bay is. So if you want to recharge yourself up, maybe even change the suit, you can do. We've got the cryopods there for a quick little recharge. And we've got a survival kit. A bit overkill, I think. But it does look quite nice. And we've got a small little viewing window here if you wanted to. So coming up the ladder. All the way up. There we go. We can come up these steep stairs. We can come to one of the first living quarter-ish type rooms. So we've got more DLC blocks here. We've got the little projector, which is projecting the actual ship itself. It does look a little bit different. Is that a different design? It might be. So yes, we can just sit in this chair, look around a bit, and all that. Get out of the chair. We've got the planters. The lockers. We've got a nice little table here for us to look over at the station. And then we can continue going up. Up through here, we have the kitchen room, where we have the DLC kitchens. It's a shame we can't interact with this and like put a pan on there or anything like that. Still, it is quite nice to look at. Our microwave. Do we need the microwave? We could always just shove it in front of the thrusters. Yes, we've got a small table there to eat stuff on. Small little couch there. Nice window to look out of. And then we can continue going through. And this is the main cockpit, but I'll come back to that a little bit later. So we still have one way to go. So all the way back down here, round, and been through there, been through there, down here, we can come through here. These are the living quarters for your passengers. So we get some chairs, we get a planter, we get a locker, a small little table, a bed, and a toilet. The toilet has no doors on there, so it's going to be very open and will probably echo if you go on that. So do be aware. Yes, we can sit on this chair, look out the window. It's all good. It's exactly the same on the opposite side, and if I was to keep going, we'll then see the same room again, because it will keep on going. At the very end here, once again, same room, a little bit different layout, I think. Then we can go through, open up this door, and this is how we get to the small catwalk, where the connector is, so you can tell your boss that you're too close and you're going to die. Oh, that's perfect, and connect and all that. And also do some maintenance work. But yes, now let's go back inside and take control of the ship itself. So bring out my HUD. Shame you can't do that on the controller. Getting in this chair, nothing. Getting in the chair over here, nothing. We have to sit in the very middle if you want to do anything. And this is the view we get. So a very quick little all the way around. This is the ship. It's very big compared to the station. Still looks great. We have a few options. So we have the connectors to uh, switch them on and off to lock ourselves. The hydrogen thrusters if you need that extra oomph going through space or you've gone to a planet or moon with an atmosphere. We've got then the pistons. Let's activate the pistons. So that one, that one and that one. Turn all the pistons on and extend them out. So there we go. So we can connect up to the base if we want. But I'm just going to pull them back in like so. And then number six is the hydrogen engine for some backup power, which I accidentally turned on. So we need to keep our precious ice for all the hydrogen tanks. So coming along to tab number two, three, four, five, there's nothing else. So that means it's time to go for a little ride. So going forwards, it's quite fast actually, relatively fast. Turning as well. Is pretty damn meaty, but it is a large a ship. Turning the opposite way. Again, it becomes quite difficult, although it could be because I'm on the controller. So let's now reverse and see how well this stops. Stopping speed is quite distant, and this is without the hydrogen thrusters. Going up. Going down. It's quite slow. And now let's turn on the hydrogen thrusters and see what kind of effect this gives. So going forwards, oh, that's very fast. That's exceptionally fast. Stopping sort of loses some effect because of the speed. There's not too many hydrogen thrusters on the reverse. 
Let's go left. Let's go right. Up. Down. So having the hydrogen thrusters uh, does help quite a lot. That's very annoying. Going down with a controller activates the parking brake. If you're interested, there is roughly 40 hydrogen tanks on this thing. So as for fuel itself for the ship, you're probably never going to run out. And as for transporting it to a base, there is quite a lot to send over. Pressing F10 and finding it, this ship is only 3,790 blocks, which is quite small actually, considering the size of it. But as for that, I think I have covered everything with this ship. It's an absolute fantastic ship from the design. You don't see many actual transport ships of this nature. They're usually just large cargo containers. But hydrogen? I think this is one of the first I've seen. And now it's time to go and activate the self-destruct sequence. Um, where do I go? Let's go... Let's go this way. I'm sure this is fine. Oh god. Well, that was a small explosion. A very small one. It just took, took out the core of the ship, basically. So you can blow it up and kill yourself, should you wish. And to finish off this video, what I thought I'd do, means I haven't done it in such a long time, is blow up this ship with loads of warheads. So here we go, I set them on a 20 second timer, and it should do a relatively big bang, considering there's a hundred. Whoa! Here we go. Wow! Did they change the exploding particle effects? Oh my. That is... That is something else. And there we go, the game has recovered. What has remained? We've got... The reactors are just flying. What on earth? It's a ghost ship now. It's just flying away by itself. Oh, be free, little ship. Be free. So anyway, this is the AST, Hydrogen Transport Vessel. If you wish to download and have a little play around with it, it will be in the description below. I highly recommend you do, because it is quite a nice little ship to uh, play around with. Especially if you have a large station that's primarily fueled by hydrogen, you could just do a little bit of RP and transport the hydrogen over to the station and all that. Maybe you set up two little stations and fly between them, sort of like the courier jobs in Elite Dangerous. That type of deal. But anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.